Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at drawing the graphs for objects that are vertically projected and we are going to start with free fall. Okay, free fall is when an object is dropped with initial velocity of zero. So it has an initial velocity equal to zero. And what we are going to observe is we are observing time. In other words, after one second, what would be the displacement? the future velocity, in other words the velocity after one second, as well as the acceleration. Now we already know that acceleration is going to be constant, so that's going to be 9.8 meters per second downwards, uh, per second squared downwards. Future velocity will depend on acceleration, displacement will depend on future velocity, but all of them will depend on how long the object is falling. Okay, so how are we going to use that? Considering that we have initial velocity zero, the time and constant acceleration, how can we work out the displacement? Well, it's not that difficult at all. We simply use the formulas that contain all the values. For example, for uh, accelerate or for displacement, we have initial velocity times delta t plus a half times delta t squared. And half acceleration times delta t squared. Sorry, I'm a bit limited for space here. So when we enter the values that we know, it's zero delta t plus a half times 9,8 times delta t squared and that simplifies to this will simply cancel and we have 4,9 t squared okay future velocity we can use the formula initial velocity plus acceleration times delta t Initial velocity being 0, acceleration being 9,8 delta t, and I'm just going to instead of delta t, I just write t. So that would just be 9,8 t. And that is what we are going to use to calculate the future velocity at time t. So let's go and do that. It's not too difficult. We are going to look at after one second. So once we have one second, if I substitute one second into this formula, what do I get? Well, let's use our calculator, 4.9 times 1 squared is equal to 4.9. Okay, That means it's about here at one second, it's fallen about 5 meters, 4.9 meters. So then I'm about there, Okay, which means my time is one second, my displacement is 4.9 meters, my future velocity is 9,8 times 1. 9,8 times 1 is simply 9,8 meters per second and my acceleration is constant, it's still 9,8 meters per second squared. Okay. How about after 2 seconds? So after 2 seconds, if I substitute into that formula, I get 4.9 times 2 squared. Gives me 19.6. 19.6 is almost at 20. So now the boulder has dropped to there. And that is after two seconds my displacement is 19,6 meters what will my future velocity be well it's now 9,8 times 2 that would be 19,6 meters per second and again this will be a constant 9.8 meters per second squared another second goes by where are we now okay so how far have we fallen 4.9 times 3 squared gives me 44.1 so I'm almost at 45 and that is at 3 seconds traveling or having done 44,1 meters now 9,8 times 3 
gives me 29,4 meters per second and acceleration of course still constant 9,8 meters per second squared let's do this two more times after four seconds where are we then four so it's 4.9 times four squared equals 78.4 that's almost at 80 so my boulder is now more or less there and that is after four seconds and i've traveled 78 comma meters 9 comma 8 times 4 gives me 39.2 meters per second acceleration stays at negative 9 or 9 9.8 meters per second squared downwards okay now last one after 5 seconds 4.9 times 5 squared gives me 122.5 and that's quite far down so i've already done 122.5 it's more or less there that's after 5 seconds 122.5 meters 9.8 times 5 gives me exactly 49 meters per second and 9,8 meters per second squared now let's just have a look at what do we observe well first of all um, I want you to see how that the distance traveled during every second increases quadratically okay now the velocity after every second increases uniformly each time it's just plus 9.8 and that makes sense because my acceleration is 9.8 meters per second per second. Okay, I hope you get that. Let's go and plot this in our graphs briefly and then you'll have a look. Um, you'll see what these graphs actually look like. So acceleration stays at a constant negative 9.8 uh, meters per second. So bef uh, after one second, it's at 9.8. After another second, two seconds, it's 9.8, 9.8, 9.8, 9.8. 9 Whenever a function is constant and we draw it, it makes a horizontal line. Mine doesn't look very straight, but yours will because you will use a ruler. And it will go on until it actually reaches the bottom. Once it reaches the bottom, you just stop right there and you draw a dot dotted line for the time um, of the fall. Okay, so how about velocity? Let's have a look at our velocity function. Velocity, we can see, was first at, after one second, at 9.8, then at 19.6, 29.4. So, after one second, we were at 9.8, about there. Two seconds, at 19.6, Three seconds, twenty nine point seven, uh, four, twenty nine point four. At four seconds, we're at thirty nine point two. And after five seconds, we were at forty nine meters per second. Now, if we can connect these dots to make it. And obviously, sorry, I forgot, our initial velocity was zero. After zero seconds, we haven't had any movement. So, my best attempt at a straight line. You can do it easier because you have a ruler, I hope. And that will go on until you reach the end of your journey where you again will just do a dotted line to the bottom at the time that you stop. Okay, so what do we notice here? Here we notice a horizontal straight line. Here we notice a straight line as well with what's supposed to be a constant slope. And this constant slope is because the slope represents the acceleration. Okay, So the greater the acceleration, the steeper the slope. The less the acceleration, the, steeper the, uh, the less the slope. Okay, 
and now displacement so for displacement we see that after initially it didn't have any displacement once the moment it was dropped was the moment it was still in his hands okay so there has no displacement but after one second his displacement is almost five just underneath five after two seconds his displacement is just underneath 20 after three seconds his displacement is just above 44 there's 45 44 so more or less there after four seconds it, his displacement is under 80 at 78 under 80 at 78 is probably about there and then after five seconds his displacement is 122.5 so that is almost exactly there, 122.5. And now you'll notice what shape, what, what graph do we notice here? Well, that is my terrible attempt at drawing uh, a smooth curve through those points but you should notice that it is a parabola and it makes sense because here we have that displacement is equal to 4 comma 9 delta t squared that is a quadratic relationship almost like y is equal to ax squared in the previous one we noticed that velocity is a straight line relationship because we get that future velocity is equal to uh, acceleration times delta t, which is similar to y is equal to ax. And the acceleration one also makes sense because it's a constant, that's why it's a horizontal line at 9,8.